Do you wanna play a tanky build that does high damage, can kill bosses and do the highest tiers of maps? Do you wanna see the world burn in a storm of fire and bring death to your enemies by the holy flames of your righteous fire? Or are you just sick of dying all the damn time? In any case, I suggest that you try the glory that is the righteous firestormer. It is a great boss killer for encounters such as Rigwald, Atsiri or the Avatar Thunder. Against high physical damage you have 7 endurance charges, high armor and a 4.5 second immortal call for temporary immunity, almost immunity to fire and lightning damage on demand, as well as very high life leech, high life regeneration and stunning enemies provide a huge amount of survivability. This and a life pool of over 7k make this build perfectly suited for new hardcore players. So if you've always been burning to try Path of Exile in hardcore mode, <laughs> burning. This might be a good way to start. To level this character I bought a life sprig for one chaos and a reverberation rod for another chaos. I then started to travel through all the life regeneration on my plan tree, so that at level 65 I would have enough regeneration to switch to righteous fire. You can find a few leveling passive trees in the video description below. For bandits I helped Oak and Normal and Merciless and killed all bandits in Cruel. Into the life sprig I put flame totem faster casting and control destruction. The reverb rod was used for firestorm, conk effect and fire penetration. Until around level 63 that worked pretty well, but after that the damage starts to feel a little bit slow. And the last two levels can be a pain in the butt, but pulling through the last two levels does not take too long. And after 65 you will be wrecking everything, because that is when you switch to righteous fire. So how does righteous fire work? RF is a buff that burns enemies around you for 50% of your life and energy shield per second. While it is active, it also grants you a huge multiplier to your spell damage. It basically works like an additional link to all of your spells. And it also looks cool, especially with the empty axe. Now for the downside. It deals 70% of your energy shield and 90% of your max life to you per second as burning damage. To survive that while also fighting monsters, you have to get a lot of fire resistance and life regeneration. The life regeneration part is taken care of by the passive tree, with a total of 12.4% of our life regenerated per second. Together with the unique shield Rise of the Phoenix, a level 17 purity of fire aura and the barbarism passive node, we can up our maximum fire resistance from 75 to 87, which is enough to reduce the damage we take from righteous fire to the point where we can sustain it with our life regeneration. Make sure you do not get too much energy shield on your gear, as it might throw off these numbers. I link righteous fire with increased burning damage, increased area of effect and concentrated effect. Firestorm is my main source of damage and linked with Spell Echo, Concentrated Effect, Fire Penetration, Controlled Destruction and Iron Will. And the build works great on a 4 or 5 link. I also self cast Enduring Cry to generate endurance charges. I use Cast When Damage Taken linked to Immortal Call, Increased Duration and Arctic Breath. Both Immortal Call and Cast When Damage Taken are fully leveled to make it only trigger upon taking high amounts of damage, so I can keep up my endurance charges most of the time. This way Immortal Call also grants a very high duration and Arctic Breath helps to slow down dangerous enemies. I am using the Warlord's Mark Curse linked to Blasphemy to turn it into an aura to debuff all enemies around me. It grants endurance charges on kill, high amounts of life and mana leech, as well as reducing the enemy's stun recovery and increasing their chance to be stunned. With Firestorm hitting very rapidly, this allows you to stun many dangerous enemies before they can even get to you. Yes you can run other curses such as flammability and I tried most of them out, but Warlord's Mark is the shit. Try it, you will love it. For mobility I use Flame Dash linked with faster casting. A Chaos Golem can be nice to further reduce damage taken. I link mine with Minion Light because I have a free socket for that. I carry a flash offering to destroy corpses when needed, like when encountering enemies who use detonate dead or corpse exploding boxes. An unlinked Val Lightning Trap allows me to boost my single target damage by means of shock ground. Flasks are very important for a Righteous Fire build, as they allow you to cover up some of the weaknesses the build has, as well as make full use of its strength. You want at least one instant life flask, the second one is optional. As with any build bring a flask of staunching to remove bleeding effects which can be very deadly. You can also use a ruby flask to boost your fire resistance to 97 to reduce the damage you take from righteous fire to the point your life regen kicks in again. Some people even like to use two ruby flasks for that. A granite flask is always a nice idea. 
The cursor's elemental weakness and flammability can be very dangerous for a Righteous Fire character. As they can reduce your fire resistance to the point, RF starts to deal huge amounts of damage to you again. Until you can overcap your resistances. To prevent that from happening, I recommend running two flasks of warding for curse removal. A flask of dowsing can be used to turn RF off should you feel the need to do so. Lastly, anti-freeze and anti-shock on flasks are very important to have in encounters where these status ailments frequently occur. For endgame map mods, this build can run any mod. For some, you just have to turn off Righteous Fire. But losing RF is approximately reducing your damage by as much as Enfeeble does. So if you can run Enfeeble maps, you can also run lower and no regeneration, blood magic and reduced maximum resistances. You can run vulnerability maps and 20% lower regeneration maps with Righteous Fire up by equipping a Primal Skull Talisman for the extra 2% regeneration. Oh, and talking about talismans, an Avian Twins talisman that converts lightning damage taken to fire damage combined with a Topaz flask makes you almost immune to lightning damage as well as fire damage. This is really nice for Atsiri or the Vinkta Square unique map, both of which you need to complete for the challenges of this league. I basically used that talisman all the time due to the spiky nature of lightning damage which can catch you off guard and kill your character. Also, being able to ignore two types of damage makes it way easier to focus on the dangerous damage sources for your character and avoid them. For a detailed guide on how to gear this build for endgame, for just 30 chaos, click here. And for more PoE content, subscribe or check out my channel. I am Yoji and I will see you soon.